Yo, book nerds, I finished reading A Small Place by Jamaica Kincaid. This was an essay, pretty much, and it's really short, so you can fly through it, honestly. It's like, it's not even a hundred pages. It is so, so short, but this was a great read. I don't know if great is the right word, but I just loved the way Jamaica Kincaid wrote this. I'm going to read the back blurb for you just to give you a little idea of what this is about. Lyrical, sardonic, and forthright, a small place magnifies our vision of one small place with Swiftian wit and precision. Jamaica Kincaid's expansive essay candidly praises the 10 by 12 mile island in the British West Indies where she grew up and makes palpable the impact of European colonization and tourism. The book is a missive to the traveler, whether American or European, who wants to escape the banality and corruption of some large place. Kincaid, eloquent and resolute, reminds us that the Antiguan people, formerly British subjects, are unable to escape the same drawbacks of their own tiny realm, that behind the benevolent Caribbean scenery are human lives, always complex and often fraught with injustice. So Jamaica Kincaid is writing about Antigua, her little tiny island, talking about how tourism and colonialism has impacted that tiny island. One thing that really struck me with this book is that it is written in second person, which I do not see very often, nor do I see it done well. And this is done well. So second person, if you are unfamiliar, is you. Jamaica Kincaid is talking to you in this book, and it is it is just so, so perfect. It makes it so effective and engaging, I thought. I'll read you just a little bit. You disembark from your plane, you go through customs. Since you are a tourist, a North American or European, to be frank, white, and not an Antiguan black returning to Antigua from Europe or North America with cardboard boxes of much needed cheap clothes and food for relatives, you move through customs swiftly. You move through customs with ease. Your bags are not searched. You emerge from customs into the hot, clean air. Immediately you feel cleansed. Immediately you feel blessed, which is to say special. You feel free. And so literally she is saying you, 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 you through this entire book. And her tone is so sarcastic and it is blunt and I love it. I love it. I eat it up. It is so good. She's just laying it all out there. She is uh, honestly, she's quite upset by the way tourism has been impacting her island and the way colonialism did before that. And so like she is rightfully angry and she's very blunt and very sarcastic and it's just very effective and it, it lightens the mood. So like when you're reading, you don't feel like she's just shouting at you, but you can get her message across and it's a little bit more lighthearted because of the sarcasm, but it's still very effective if that makes sense. There are a lot of long paragraphs and run on sentences in here though, which can throw you off a little bit. Once you get into it a little ways though, at least for me, I got used to it, but yeah, watch for that though. But basically the main point of this book is to show that like tourists just have no idea what's going on, honestly. Like they have no respect for the places they visit, especially this little, little island. And they just think, oh, this is paradise. And that's as far as their brains go. They just, they can't get past surface level. I'm gonna read you this other part of this. So like, again, if you don't want spoilers, like kind of warning right now, spoiler alert, because this book is really short, so it's kind of hard to talk about without giving you spoilers. But anyway, I'm gonna read another quote here because it kind of illustrates my point about tourists not getting it. You see yourself taking a walk on the beach. You see yourself meeting new people, only they are new in a very limited way, for they are people just like you. You see yourself eating some delicious locally grown food. You see yourself, you see yourself. You must not wonder what exactly happened to the contents of your laboratory when you flushed it. You must not wonder where your bath water went when you pulled out the stopper. You must not wonder what happened when you brushed your teeth. Oh, it might all end up in the water you are thinking of taking a swim in. The contents of your laboratory might, just might, 
grazed gently against your ankle as you wade carefree in the water, for you see in Antigua there is no proper sewage disposal system. Like that's disgusting, but do tourists think about that? No. They don't think about how there are sewage issues in this beautiful place they're visiting. They just see the beauty. They don't see the problems. And so obviously they aren't doing anything to try and fix things or help things. Another point that Kincaid makes is that tourists are people, are usually rich people that want to just travel because they're bored. And they travel to these beautiful places, but most of those beautiful places are poor. And so these rich people are traveling to poor places and the poor people there can't get out and travel because they're too poor and they're stuck in this beautiful place that isn't as beautiful as you think it is on the surface because there's a lot of issues going on, a lot of corruption, a lot of obviously like sewage issues and things like that that aren't being fixed. And so it's just not a paradise like people think it is. And the natives don't like the tourists. They don't like you there. They just, they don't like you. <laughs> it's at least in Antigua, that is what Kincaid is saying. They don't like you. There's another quote I wanna share because I thought it was really good. <laughs> This is about capitalism, and so yeah, this has to tie in with the colonialism that she talks about too, um, but she says, Do you know why people like me are shy about being capitalists? Well, it's because we, for as long as we have known you, were capital, like bales of cotton and sacks of sugar, and you were the commanding, cruel capitalists, and the memory of this is so strong, the experience so recent, that we can't quite bring ourselves to embrace this idea that you think so much of. Yeah, she's obviously referencing like slavery and stuff like that too. It's, it's very, very moving and powerful. She talks about how they don't have a library on their island, so no library means no books, no thinking. Like, books lead to learning, lead to thought. So if you're not reading, you're not learning. If you're not learning, you're not thinking. That's like her point. We take so much for granted, here in the U.S. especially. She talks about the corrupt government and how government officials own businesses and then the government uses those businesses. So like, they're basically just padding their own pockets. And she argues that their government is corrupt because of the colonizers, because they learned corruption from the colonizers. The colonizers came and took what wasn't theirs and now their current government is also taking what is not theirs and not being honest and it's just, it's corrupt. So it is a very good argument, I would say. It was something I'd never thought about before. And then tying in with the slavery and the colonizers, like she talks about how they were slaves. So their culture was like eradicated, their language, their religion was eradicated. So like they're now a people with like no, no history. And so how can you build a culture and something that's your own when you, you're you using your colonizers' languages and like you have nothing else in your past to look back on, to grow from besides slavery? Like it's, it. she words it so well, like I'm, I feel like I'm not explaining it well enough, but she does a great job explaining this. And honestly, like, like I said, like this book is very sarcastic, but you can tell that she has a lot of rage but I don't feel like, she, I don't feel, it's really hard to word it because like, as I was reading it, I didn't feel like I was being like attacked. I, I understood where she was coming from and she feels very justified. And then that sarcasm just like kind of sprinkles through to make it feel not so sharp, I guess. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of rage. This book just makes me want to be more aware when I'm traveling, because I like to travel. I love to travel, I love to visit new places, and it makes me wanna be more like aware of the places I'm going and what it's really like and not get sucked into that touristy mindset like, oh, this is perfect here. And it's paradise because odds are it's not. There's probably more going on under the surface. So it just gives me more respect, I guess, for the places that I would like to visit. And yeah, I guess, if you're going to Antigua especially, just please be respectful and don't be just a stupid tourist, I guess. <laughs>
If you've read this, please let me know what you guys thought. I, I thought it was very good and it's honestly, it's like 80 some pages. So it really takes you no time to read it. So check it out and let me know what you guys think. That's all for me this week. I will see you guys next Monday. Hit like and subscribe. Thanks for talking books with me.